Hey, I'm so sorry. I had some technical difficulties. Imagine that. <laughs> it's, you know, it's always the fun of doing um, a live event, right? So, yeah. Right. Yeah, but we are all gathered here together and how amazing. So, welcome. So, what do you have for us, Thomas? So, today, for our 30 minute session, our offering for this month um, is I'm making hummus, homemade hummus. If you're buying store bought hummus, you just should not be buying store bought hummus. Just make it at home. Um, it's easy, it's tasty, um, and it's healthy. And you know what you're putting into your product, into your food. So, um, Christina, if I can get started, I'll just uh, give an introduction of myself. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. So I'm Thomas McClure. Um, some of you may know me as the founder and executive director of the Columbus Fashion Council, which oversees Fashion Week Columbus and other initiatives um, and programs here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, but what you may not know, unless you follow me on Instagram, which is officially Tommy Time, you may not know that I'm also very passionate about cooking. Um, I actually have experience in, as a sous chef um, in a, earlier in my life um, as a sous chef in a restaurant in Texas called The Cliffs Restaurant. Um, but I continue to keep that passion, uh, keep that creativity, um, serve up uh, my friends, my dinner guests, um, just amazing meals. So for um, Going Own Collective, what I want to do is really focus on um, just putting love into what you make. Um, and eating clean and just nourishing your body. Um, and whether it's your body or your dinner guests, um, you know, uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So um, we have right now uh, some garbanzo beans. So if you look, get two cans of garbanzo beans. And then keep, please keep the juice in the can. This is called aquafaba. And um, this is a secret that I use whenever I want a smooth hummus. So we're also vegetables. So we're not doing pita chips. I'm not eating pita chips, but you can use pita chips if you like. But I like vegetables with my hummus. Um, and we're, we're gonna present them in a better way than just chopping them up and putting them on a plate. So um, let's get started. Let's first make um, the hummus. And what we're gonna do is we need to have tahini. It's a sesame paste. And the sesame paste goes in first. Usually what I do is I say one tablespoon of tahini for one can of garbanzo beans. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually had some issues finding the um, tahini today, um, the tahini, sorry. And um, it was actually in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean aisle at the grocery store. So tahini is in two tablespoons. And garlic. Now, I believe in a lot of garlic. Um, it says, usually the recipe says one clove per can. I have about four cloves here. Then with the tahini, drizzle a little bit of olive oil in here to give it some liquidation. If your tahini is really thick, sometimes your tahini is super pasty. So you wanna make sure that um, you add a little bit more olive oil when it is. And, don't mind the noise. Clean that up for a few seconds. Give it a good minute. You want the garlic to be really get chopped up. Um, once that is completed, pretty good. We are going to now add two lemons. So one lemon per can. And let's cut this up. You have a lemon squeezer. It's one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. Simple lemon squeezer. And I just learned this this year, actually, um, or last year. I was always putting the lemon, you can see the cut side up. That is the absolute wrong way to put it. So put it cut side down so all the juice squeezes out. And again, we're going to put two lemons in this. Again, it's one lemon per can of garbanzo beans. This one's kind of big. And you may like your hummus a bit more lemony, so it's fine to add more lemon, I would say towards the end, so you know what that flavor profile looks like. All right, let's go ahead and blend this up. 
Do the blend for again, like 30 seconds, maybe. Good. For those 10 seconds. Then let's go ahead and add the garbanzo beans. Again, this is two 16 ounce cans of garbanzo beans. Save the juice. It's called, it's called aquafaba. Right, so again, garbanzo beans are in here. Let's go ahead and add that up for a bit. I would say do this at least 30 uh, seconds. Um, it gets really, it starts getting cakey. This is when you start adding your aquafaba. Just in case you couldn't hear me, sorry, this is loud. Um, you'll see that your garbanzo beans will start getting really pasty. And this is when you add aquafaba to loosen it up and to smooth it out. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go over just a little bit, smooth it out. Um, I use about one can of aquafaba. I'm going to keep this because it may not be to the smoothest I like. Let's start, let's start it out. It's pretty creamy. So, I always keep spoons on the side to taste um, what you're making. It's not as creamy as I want. I'm gonna taste it. Pretty good, actually. I'm gonna add a little bit more aquafaba. So I have this big processor. It's an art. For about 10 years now. And it's so used that the buttons are worn out, the plastic layers on the buttons. But this thing is a beast. We use it for hummus, we just use it for dog food, so we make our own dog food at home. Um, but it's lasted 10 years. All right, let's see. Um, this is super creamy. It looks delicious. I'm going to show you close up to the camera here in a second, but let's add a few things. I know it needs a little salt. So I will put about a pinch of salt, actually maybe a little more, like half a teaspoon. Mix that up. All right, let's taste it. New spoon, do not double dip. Oh my God, it's so good. And I haven't had dinner yet, so this is actually making me hungry. So that's delicious. We're gonna leave this here for a second. What we're gonna do next is we are gonna cut up some of these vegetables. And what I have today, I have to clean my area. Um, I'm a little OCD that way. Um, what we have today, the vegetables we have are celery. Some, um, I bought these carrots already ripple cut, but you can cut them yourself if you'd like. Um, a seedless cucumber and tomatoes. So we're gonna do a few things. When you're serving up your hummus, um, either for yourself or for your guests, you wanna make your vegetables easy to eat. You don't want a huge chunk, like don't serve this with your hummus. Cut this where people can just take a bite. Um, and you know, and not have a lot of effort in trying to eat it. So the celery itself, I'm gonna cut the ends off. All at once. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and um, cut them lengthwise to make them thinner. And I'm gonna take a couple of them and instead of cutting them straight across, just cut diagonal. It gives it an interesting uh, presentation when you're plating it. And also remember if, um, if you're not in the kitchen uh, often or if you're not using your knives often, one bit of advice from me to you 
because you always tuck your fingers, whether you're chopping or slicing. Um, if you don't tuck your fingers, you're gonna cut your finger. So your finger, your knuckles, I don't know if you can see this, but your knuckles serve as a guard against cutting your fingers. Um, and it also helps you measure out like when you're chopping and how many, you know, how, how uh, large the pieces need to be. So we have the celery cuts. You already have the carrots cut. Here's a trick on the cucumber. To make this more presentable, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a potato peeler and we're gonna put, um, peel stripes of skin off the cucumber, but we're gonna keep some on there as well. So one long, see what we're doing. So now we have is a striped cucumber. So let's go ahead and now slice our cucumber. Slice the ends off, of course. And again, you want to remember that um, your guests need to be able to eat the hummus easily with the vegetables. So don't do huge chunks of cucumbers. And these come out so beautifully. It's perfect. Nice. So I'm gonna plate some of these vegetables because I need more room on my cutting board because now we're gonna make a few cherry tomato roses or flowers. Which is very simple, it's not a hard thing to do. Um, and it just elevates your plate. For those of you um, tuning in, my offerings monthly for Going Own Collective are the first Tuesdays of every month from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So it is free. Every offering is free, and um, but you have to register, you have to RSVP. Now the organization, Going Collective Own, is a do purely donation-based organization. So. If your heart desires to donate money towards the organization to keep the collective going, please do so. It will help the organization and it'll keep us coming back to you every month. Okay, so what I did is I got tri-colored tomatoes, uh, cherry tomatoes from the store, and my paring knife. And what we wanna do with this is we wanna start cutting diagonals into, and you probably can't see this from there, um, diagonals, zigzag all across. And I'll show you a close up here in a second. I'm gonna do a few. And you're connecting all of the cuts. Because at the end, you're gonna pull the two pieces apart. One of my first jobs was at the YMCA camp in Texas in the kitchen. And we were, I was in charge of the salad bar. And the salad bar was always gorgeous, it was always beautiful because I was able to, um, I was able to just really show my creativity. I was able to make, you know, these little tomato flowers. I actually made, you know, like watermelon gators, um, which is basically a watermelon looks like an alligator with fruit inside. Um, and all the kids loved it. We were, it was a Wednesday camp. We had kids from like, I think uh, first grade to maybe seniors, but, um, I was like 16 years old. So uh, garnishes were one of my favorite things to do on that salad bar. Take your time on this. I'm rushing a little bit. Um, so I know we only have 30 minutes. Um, but let me see if I can get a really good one here. Be careful not to stab yourself. That would not be good. Right, this one is almost done. I'll show you this one. Lost my place. Okay, so I'll come close to the camera. So basically, you're cutting a zigzag, if you can see that, all the way through, and then you'll end up with 
cherry tomato like this. So pretty cute, pretty simple. Takes a little time, but that's what we're gonna go with for now. I'll throw a couple of just regular tomatoes on as well. When we present, clean my area. And let's see, okay. Let's move on to plating the hummus. I just, I'm using my regular plate for the hummus. If I was presenting this on a table, um, this is perfect. But I, clean my, I need to clean my cutting board. All right. So we have our hummus. This is pretty much, it's ready. It's delicious. Um, I will show you the texture of this. I'll do a close up here. So, as you can see, this is a very creamy hummus. And if you want it more creamy, I would say process it longer and add a little bit more aquafaba. So we're gonna pour this in the center of the plate. Some people don't like it as creamy though. Some people like it more creamy. So whatever your preference is. And some recipes call for water and I prefer to use aquafaba. All right. So we have our hummus. Now we're gonna start decorating the plate, making it look really nice. And you can do whatever makes you happy. Like if you wanna scatter it, that's cool. If you wanna like line everything up, like we're doing right here, that's cool. I also say don't overload your plate with all of the vegetables. Um, just use what you need, and then you can replenish the vegetables as it gets lower. Um, it makes for a better presentation. Celery sticks. Again, if you're buying your hummus, from the store, it's time to stop doing that. This is so simple and it's so good. And let's see, what else do we have here? Our tomatoes, oh, carrots. I also thought about getting baby carrots and um, cutting those lengthwise, but then I saw the ripple carrots, I went ahead and bought those. Okay, let's add our tomatoes. Like maybe one here. We can spread these tomatoes out. They're like flowers, right? So spread them out across the hummus. Maybe put a few together. You don't have to use all of them. Maybe a couple of uh, other tomatoes. Cool. Now, let's add that. So now um, two more things go on this. Um, let's see the paprika, but first olive oil. So I like to sprinkle a bit of olive oil over the hummus. I'm gonna add more tomatoes on the side. You can just play with it, like get creative, like, you know, have fun with it. Um, and if it's not perfect, it's not perfect, um, but it's gonna be delicious. So a little bit of olive oil. Then, some paprika, just for color, a little bit of smokiness. Have it. So I want to add a few more tomatoes. See, I'm getting creative now. One more tomatoes, something's missing. Cool. I think we have a decent presentation. Simple, easy, something we did in literally is that 15 minutes. So let me give a give you a closer look. So here we have our presentation of very creamy hummus. And as you can see, it looks great, it's presentable. And it's not out of a plastic container on the table. It's on a plate with garnishes and very healthy, healthy, super healthy. So uh, there's that.
We will definitely have the recipe to you. Um, if you've signed up, we have your email address and we will get the recipe to you to follow yourself. Um, other than that, like that was pretty quick. That's pretty simple. I have like five minutes left. Um, so don't forget every month, first Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., goingomecollective.com. You have to register. It is a free class. Um, and there are lots of other great experts involved as well. I think the previous one was uh, yoga, which is great. Um, but you know, if you feel enlightened, if you feel zen, if you feel like you gain some knowledge, please donate. Do what your heart desires. Um, it will help the organization. And if you want to follow me, go to our Instagram, my Instagram page, which is officially Tommy Time. And I do post food photos. Um, I post fashion stuff. I also post just my life. Um, so uh, feel free to follow me. On Facebook, it's Thomas McClure. Uh, and that's it. So. Yay! We are like so happy right now. <laughs> that was We're, like, amazing. Yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. Thomas, thank you so much for that awesome presentation. We're, we were just in awe the whole time. We're like, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at this. And I've got to tell you that I have tried making hummus and Laura yes. shared the same <laughs> and just cannot get it. But we both cannot wait to try your recipe and you did it with such ease. So hopefully we have the same experience in the kitchen. So thank you so much. That was incredible. And the end product, oh my gosh, we're like, you know, we're like, we still have the rest of the night to go, but we're so hungry now. I mean, and I wasn't hungry at all before we started, right? But I mean, as soon as we started, it's like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm ready. So that looks amazing. Thank you. Got it. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so your monthly offering, can you tell people when that is again? Yes, every first Tuesday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. But you've got to register. Um, you know, at goingomecollective.com. Yeah, and you guys, it is oh. donation based. So, you know, contribute what you can. I mean, the most important thing, we would just like you to join us. So, um, but yeah, join, join Thomas every month for new and fresh offerings. And I know I'll be there. I may actually come visit you and sit in the kitchen. Yes, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Road trip. a dinner party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. So thank you so much again. Thank you. All right, guys. So we're we're gonna um, we're gonna pause here for a few minutes. We've got Yoga Nidra coming up at seven uh, p.m. A few minutes here with Laura Bender. So stay tuned. <laughs>